Right here when making things happening Shaping the future, it starts today, yeah It starts with me, so I put my walk in it Me not believe in luck and talk in it
future is reserved for the foresighted who can operate within the context of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. How does the foresighted operate? The foresighted might have or might have not operated within the context of yesterday. His or her contact with yesterday may not be personal. It could be through access to history. What do we mean by history? That is by searching for information and data on issues of relevance that already exist from yesterday, um, trying to build on it from today. So today, the foresighted has that opportunity to operate on the basis of the information or the data that he or she must have gathered yesterday and to initiate more information gathering today. Therefore, with the combination of yesterday and today, the foresighted enters tomorrow with what has happened. And then the foresighted is trying to confront tomorrow, which is the unknown. What is the unknown? The unknown is the phenomenon that has always challenged humanity or the human race right from man's appearance on the planet Earth. Since man has, has no clue as to what unknown will offer in spite of his yesterday and today, he or she often approaches it with fear. It is that fear that gives birth to his mental and spiritual engagement with the unknown. Definitely, his yesterday and today they provide the objective basis for his understanding of tomorrow, which is the unknown. With the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of yesterday and today, he or she will veer into the unknown, which is tomorrow, with predictions and probabilities of what tomorrow the unknown will be. Even though predictions and probabilities of what will be may not be, yet man's concern with and full comprehension of his yesterday and today mixed with fear and uncertainty has begun man's intellectual journey and the search for what you call growth or development or advancement. In the process, man has been able to manage nature with his inquisitiveness, science and technology, and being able to transform man, which I call the beast in the forest, to the beast of civilization. Now, let us talk about shaping the future. I say shape the future is shaping the unknown. What does it entail to shape the future, which is unknown? It behoves an entity, whether an individual or a society or a nation or an international uh, setup to plan and faith in the outcome of your plan constantly in order to shape the future. So the difference then between entities, whether between individuals, between societies, or between nations or international organizations, is the nature of planning itself that has been adopted. For example, planning may be engaged on the basis of complacency or radical change. 
What do I mean by complacency? You may approach the future, which is the unknown, by trying to be complacent, by thinking that the future or tomorrow or the unknown will be a projection of yesterday's and today's. This is a linear projection that does not take into account unforeseen or other extraneous factors. That is, it does not foresee what can happen between yes and tomorrow, which is the only It might be meaningful to some extent if the information and the data you have collected from yesterday and today are relatively reliable and detailed, but there is no land where events can be predicted over a long time with such. Now, let us look at planning for a radical change as opposed to complacency. When you approach the future, which I call the unknown, which you call the tomorrow, it can be expected that there is likely not to be a basis from which we can predict tomorrow, from yesterday and today's occurrences. Man's tomorrow is usually laid with uncertainties and unpredictable, that is, the tomorrow may take a drastic change from its past, far more above what yesterday and today may say, the entity, the individual, the society, or the nation should develop several scenarios, that is, several possibilities that the future may take. This we call for attributes that can predict the future. The entity must be able to combine an historical as well as statistical minds to build the possibilities or the scenarios of the future. It is when you can predict the future that you can shape the future. The future. If you cannot predict the future, you cannot shape the future. However, what might, whatever might be the scenario that you build, it will still remain mobility. I think this is why when you look at mankind itself, we cannot divorce mankind from dependence on a superior or supernatural intelligence that knows tomorrow from today that knows the end from the beginning. That is why we all God to shape when we are trying to shape the future. We are always looking for this supernatural intelligence when we are shaping the future because the supernatural intelligence knows tomorrow from today and knows the end from the beginning. Let us look at individual and society. What they do in trying to shape the future and how they affect the future. Apart from the uncertainty that bedevils any planning for the future, the individual can be limited or enhanced by the larger community or society in shaping the future. That is, the future you are trying to shape for yourself can be limited or enhanced by your nation. Uh, society also can be limited by the individual. Uh, society can limit the individual by lack of provisions of an enabling environment or basic social services like water, electricity, hygienic surroundings, and so on. They can limit the future shaping of the individual. Similarly, the individual can also limit the society in shaping the future. 
I neglected his or her civic responsibilities and social rights. For example, if you fail to pay your taxes, you are limiting the nation's ability to shape the future. If you fail to vote, you are limiting the society because you are neglecting your social responsibilities. If you fail as individuals to kick against obnoxious law and statutes in your society, you are also limiting in shaping the future. What is my conclusion? Because you haven't given me enough time. But that's why I had to prepare this speech because if I have time, I could speak for three hours uh, philosophically on the future. So my conclusion is that shaping is a human intellectual activity which traverses yesterday, a former future, today, that will be another 24 hours. And tomorrow that is an unknown by itself. This future is usually constructed to improve a man's predicament as it exists currently. It requires drawing from yesterday and today's information, experience, and data to shape I of fear of the unknown. Because if you of the unknown, you won't worry. But since you don't have it, you fear, and that is why you engage in planning against the unknown, and you have faith in the outcome of your planning. And no matter how tight a plan could be, its outcome is always a probability. It is always a probability. You are never sure exactly how it will turn out. And I say that is why we can divert mankind from dependence on a superior or a supernatural intelligence. He knows tomorrow from today. He knows the end from the beginning. We call him or her God because he will be her. Am I not right? So we call him or her God when we are shaping the future. That is, when you're shaping the future, you do it with a superior, a supernatural intelligence. It's more than your statistics and what you gather from yesterday. However, I think the individual society, when it's shaping the future, and vice versa, the society needs the individual because one can either enhance or limit the other in shaping the future. Thank you for giving me 12 minutes. Thank you.